Valley to the Sheds. It's Friday night. We are on week number eight, Mark. Martin, uh, still going strong. Eight weeks in. Aye. Uh, it's a good league, but I, I seem to be slipping down the slipping down the church all over the place this week. You're slipping. You are, are slipping. And even your hashtags aren't working to try and get you support. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's followed us this week. Uh like the page um, and plenty of comments. We're up to 220 followers. I think we've gained eight from last week. So, welcome everybody that's new. Keep hitting that like and ding button and whatever else you've been doing. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor. It's the third week of Toffee Art sponsoring this week's uh, prize, which, of course, is the Pelly. And I'll, I'll update you who's, who's leading the, the the race to win that this month. Um, you can check him out on Twitter, or you can go to his online store, which is toffeeart.com. I'm almost sure it is. <clears throat> and if you check his Twitter, he's doing a cracking hard candle <laughs> painting. So he's a great artist, painter as well. Do you so. know? Do you know what? A painting, like a proper painting, proper oh, of a what? Everton Everton manager. He's done another. He's done a Leighton Baines, like a defender before. He's a great painter, so he is worth a watching now, guy. Um, so this week we'll be doing Fantasy Superior Week Seven, week just past there. We have a special guest, one of I think one of the, the top Superior players in Ireland. Let's say he's he's Ireland's he's Ireland's greatest. Ireland's great. Can I don't tell can I? Uh, we'll have beers with our special guest or wines, whatever he decides to bring to the table. <laughs> yeah, what's what's in your tea. box? Match highlights from our special guest. Painter's Corner. Um, we have last week's spray uh, competition, <coughs> and this week's, and then we have Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. So let's get straight into it. Fantasy football. <laughs> Martin Oak. Nah, it's not happening yet, is it? Shake. It's just, where, where'd you go? He ended up away. He ended up with 44 fuck. points. I know, but I slipped down. I slid down the... 19th or something did he end up? 19th? That's not, that, that's not great, like, is it? Uh, that's, three, had, that's three places drop. I had four points more than you, so 48. And um, the... the the pretty depressing thing is we both get knocked out of the cup, <laughs> which is Absolutely. which is always fun. So Shade. who knocked me out? No cup, with no cup run. Who knocked you out last week? Um, let's, let me see. I have it here. Finicky Reds, Clubville man knocked the dairy man out. I'm happy it's for Clubville man. I'm happy it's for Clubville man. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> So um, this week there was no change at the top. Paul Pearson stays at the top with Tynamite. He had seventy-one points. Dean Malone, uh, Bugsy's babes, Bugsy's babes got eighty-one points. He's the top goal scorer, point scorer for the week. Uh, he moved up to second. Tevenage, Trevor Cowdery drops to third. He got sixty-seven points. Barry Spence stays in fourth with fifty-six points. The Lombardi oh, and Brendan Ashley. We are Groot jumps up to fifth. So he got 71 points and that keeps the top five. Um, as it says, Bugsy's Babes got the highest score and there's no change at the bottom with our Jude qualifying when I turn it up. <laughs> our Jude. Our Jude knocked out somebody half decent in the cup. Uh, where is he? Damn United. Ah, he's there somewhere. He knocked out Maddie and Beth who had the highest point score last week. Um, yes. So for played him. Uh, so the highest three week total, and this is for who is in to win this prize, and there's not many points separating them. There's like a point, a point each way. So we are group um, has that's Brendan <coughs> Ashley two hundred points for the three weeks. Tenemates one hundred ninety nine. Maddie and Bess one hundred ninety eight, and Bugsy's Babe have one hundred ninety seven. <coughs> so it's tied at the top. It's tied at the top. Um, we don't have. Uh, we have fixtures this week and this will be the last week so we, after this week we'll know who wins the Pele piece for Coffee Art so the cup right okay last week we let too many through on a buy we let no, no way we let the top five through so it messed Facts. the numbers up 
Uh, well, right, then, when we put them in through, it brought the numbers to 17. <clears throat> we can't do a draw with 17 people. And even if we put one through this week, 16, and then he comes back in, it's still going to be wrong. So I had to add somebody back in into the cup. Really? But what it did was the highest point score in the cup that got knocked out was me. Fucking I'm only joking. <laughs> the highest point score that got knocked out of the cup was I Love Hazard. And it's a right, Natalie Power. Natalie, right, it's a girl. She got I'll 63 points. That's she got right. 63 points, so I'm adding her back into the cup. Um, so in the cup still is Tanamate, Tevin Each, Bugsy's Babes, Chopper AFC, We Are Groot, Balotelli Tubbies, Sporting a Beer Gut, Up the Posh, The Damned United, Duck La Prague, Brig, Finicky Reds, It's Up for Grabs, Chopper Quakers, Mardana Kebab, Aiden Hawk 22, No Human is Legal, Valley Drawn Blues, and I Love Hazard. So there's 18 in the cup. And here's the cup draw because me and Zara done it earlier. So there you go. So Zara's going to do the draw for me. She's sitting down here. (laughs) You're grand down there, all right? So you start calling the numbers out and I'll start writing the names out. Go. Eight. Eight is up the posh. Next one. Sixteen. Sixteen is no human is legal. Next one. Number two, Trevenage. Three. Number three is Bugsy's Babes. Five. Number five is We Are Groot. Twelve. Number twelve is It's Up For Grabs. Eighteen. Eighteen is I Love Hazard. Who got a buy this week? Get back in. Number seven, sporting a beer gut. Thirteen. Thirteen is soccer Quakers. Go ahead. One. Number one, Tainamate. Number fourteen. Fourteen is Maradona Kebabs. Yep. Yeah. Number 11. Number 11, Finicky Reds. Next one. Four. Number four, Chopper FC. Barry Spence. Nine. The Damned United, Jude Morrow. Barry plays Jude. Second bottom from the league, Jude. Number six. Number six, Balotelli Tubbies. Number fifteen. Fifteen. Is Aiden Hawk twenty two. Seventeen. Seventeen is Badly Drawn Blues. And ten. Number ten is Duck the Prague. Craig Stewart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. That's the draws. The next game week for the cup will be week 11. Best of luck. Thank you, Zara. <laughs> there you go. That's the cup. Um, and that's this week's fantasy football. Well done, Zara. Well done, Zara. Thank you for helping me. Couldn't have done it with you, kiddo. I'm, I'm crumpling that up and I need it. It's got the, the cup fixtures all over right there. <laughs> that up. Um, yeah, so time for our special guest. Um, you would call him <coughs> Ireland's. You've called him Ireland's greatest player. Ireland's he greatest. is plays for White Stars or from Leeds, aren't they? Yorkshire, Yorkshire team. They're mixed. They're mixed all over. They're mixed, they're mixed all, all over. Well, they're based in Yorkshire, aren't they? Well, uh, maybe they are. He'll, he'll clarify that anyway. He's a former All Ireland holder. So can he former's a, a current form, former's a bit tight. He was the All Ireland holder for many a year. Before succumbing to the legend, the legend that well, is Kenny Beggs. He's a former All Ireland holder. He's a current Ulster Championship holder before he changed his name yes. to the Championship, and he's also a St Pat's fan, which is terrible for him. <laughs> awful, awful. 
So let me introduce you, or Martin, would you like to introduce him? Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the gentle giant that is Mr. Mark Farrell. Mark Farrell! Uh, hello, chaps. Hi, Mark. <laughs> welcome welcome hey. on board. My still pleasure. Quite, um, still, good to see you. still quite a bit of list for the Farrell. Yeah, absolutely. You know. What's that? What's that? Video picture in the background, Mark. Yes, yeah, that's the um, the uh, my uh, my football team, St. Pat's. Um, that was the cup final team of 2014. First time we won the cup in 53 years, and um, it's it's taken on that that t victory took on a bit of a cult status because it broke a bit of a hoodoo of the club never winning the cup in 53 years. It was the longest running kind of a, a, a saga. And fans often remember it more than any league win. And that was just as a beauty old way I rendered the picture that the club shop sold about a year ago, start of last season, and um, a year and a half ago now. I'm, I'm losing track with, with, with COVID and the, the, the cutting of the season. But um, yeah, so they sold a load of them. So a lot of the fans uh, uh, responded well. They sold out with the first print runner, I remember. And it was 20 euro, I think, for that. And um, I, I got a friend. Had to. How could I miss? How could I give up on that when I saw the club advertising it? You know. <laughs> and you, who did, you must have beat your deadly rivals, so, uh, some bad, or not some bad, Sean McRovers or something, did you? No, no. It was a team from uh, north of the border. North. Oh, I can't think. I can't think. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh near Strabane. I do remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember Lefer. something about it being a very gracious team. I thought, you know what? Them boys haven't won a cup in 53 years. Yes, that was very nice look, of you. Look, look at the faces in the audience. Well enough. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. give it to them. Give them one. Give it to them. Just give them one. Well, well, uh, that was the third time lucky against your lot because you beat us in the previous two games, 06 and 12. Um, I remember, um, yeah, geez, 06, Mark Farron. Remember, uh, well, poor fella. Right. And uh, I remember him scoring, a, him scoring a couple of goals against us, breaking our hearts that day. And uh, come on over and celebrating in front of the Pats fans for his first goal. And I was probably one of the ones giving the poor guy abuse, you know. But, um, yeah, he's a great player. Uh, uh, sadly missed. Sadly, sadly missed, is right. Also, um, Mark Farrell, who brought Derry City Table Football Club into existence. It was Lawrence's Mark Farrell. Uh, Mark Farrell. Oh, Mark Farrell. Sculpted. Mark Farrell. Sculpt, sculpted Farrell. figure. Oh, very good. Yeah, right. Ah, right. Very good. Oh, bad, bad luck for you, Lawrence. But anyway. I know. I know. But sure. <laughs> you mean you, you know. So, we'll go. We'll go straight into the interview, Mark. Um, I've already introduced you. You play for White Stars, Yorkshire, isn't it? Based in Yorkshire? Yeah, Yorkshire in, in the past. Yeah, Yorkshire Phoenix. Good, Yorkshire good, good. Phoenix. Some good, good memories. Um, and then obviously with with your the former All Ireland champion, and you're the current Ulster champion holder. So see the way, see the way he throws without, that out. Former. Without, without, without no, no. the St. Pat's, the St. Pat's party here. But, but uh, without telling everybody at home your age, can you tell us when you started playing Sabudio and how you managed to discover Sabudio? So like, what was your yeah. your your introduction to Sabudio? Yeah, I suppose I suppose that, well, it's probably two introductions. Uh, uh, the first one was probably around 19, 1990, I think. And it was just around the time, if you remember, you see it on YouTube now, the, the Subutio World Cup from that year. The kind of famous yeah. Channel 4 production now. It's taken on its own sort of <laughs> life of its own. Everyone remembers that, even if they don't have anything to do with the game as such. And um, around then, I think I'd started playing just before it. We had a few Irish tournaments. We had a good Irish scene going then, you know. Um, a lot of players around Dublin. We had Northside and South Dublin. We had Cork. Uh, a few players from all over then. Obviously, Northern Ireland lads were, were doing their own thing, and they were strong, you know, and we, we'd still uh, mix in tournaments. And a friend of mine, um, Ken McKenzie from Crumlin, uh, the area I'm from in South Dublin, and Mick O'Brien as well, um, those two lads got me into it. Mick O'Brien was actually the Irish national champion, the junior champion. He went to that World Cup in Italy uh, representing the Republic. And um, that was Mick who came up to Glen Torren that time. And played. Right. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, maybe dips in dips in and out again. He was a great player, he was Mick, and uh, he was the um, or, or he went over on the to the brilliant free trip to, to Italy that Waddington's laid on for them when they sponsored it in those days. And yeah. him and, himself and Ken played games and kind of a uh, couple of other lads from the school we were in. And I guess I was I was good mates with both Mick and Ken, and they said, oh yeah, you know, come on down and uh, come around to the house and try this. And 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 
definitely from then on I thought yeah yeah this is a the level of competition the sort of the like then the social aspect of it all was brilliant too you know what I mean uh, um, uh, and the competition and, and these lads were like Ken, Mick and there was a couple of other lads around Crumlin as well the Nolans um, they're really good players and yeah they got me into it really and, and uh, got me on set then and we used to play our leagues and everything you know and it was really high, high standard of competition um I said six or seven players we had just in uh, two or three roads you might say you know uh, six or seven players and three of them went on to be national champions uh, so we had, a, we, had a, we had a really strong little thing going and those two yeah. lads got me into it and when you're playing with that level of talent uh, it was definitely they were they were really keen for playing and and it was really uh, it was a natural fit in that sense you know it wasn't stop start they were kind of they were fully into it and going to tournaments all over the place and uh, and uh, from then on that was me definitely uh, hooked on it <laughs> so you what you're saying you deny you, you never really stopped Avi you just kept yeah playing, you? I let me see saying and... yes I suppose second introduction then I stopped around nine it was 94 I think in 94 I, I, I won the, the Irish Youth Championship in 1993 and that got me a trip to Paris and to play in the the first as it turned out, fist of World Cup. Fist of Waddington's has sort of given up sponsoring the game on such a heavy level. And fist of was, you know, it, was, it was developing as its own thing now, away from the kind of corporate end, uh, or yeah. at least the sponsorship side of it. You know, it wasn't, wasn't being run for the sake of being run by the, by the company that manufactured it. And uh, I went off to play in Paris, and that was great. Uh, won a trip with that. And then I was in college at that point, just going into college. I was very young starting college. I think I was 11. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you know, it makes sense. And, and uh, so uh, um, okay. that was me done for about 14 years after that. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, oh, till, uh, 2008, actually. And uh, um, so I stopped after World Cup. And John Moore, um, the, 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 the Moore clan, they're, 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 they've been around forever. Uh, and Nicky and, and his nephew, Gary, they kind of got me back into it. And they were traveling up. Uh, we didn't have so many tournaments in the South then, but in 2008, he said, "Come on up, we're playing in Belfast, uh, which was Kenny and 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 Barry and the lads. They were running their uh, tournaments out of places like Dunmurray and stuff. Um, and they kind of got me back. I drove up with them one one Saturday, and um, <coughs> that was my second introduction. And uh, back in, uh, found, found it all over again. Yeah, you haven't you haven't disappeared now. You've, you've, you've no, part of, no, part of since the studio I, history now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well." Came back as an old fart and just just got older playing it. That's really old. <laughs> so you you mentioned a couple of the Northern boys and, and a couple of the Northern boys have mentioned yourself before about being over at the World Cup and and mixing with the Irish lads and obviously obviously some people do North and South divide but all the all the Northern lads always speak so highly about the Irish lads. And what <clears throat> what was your your experience of actually being playing in a World Cup? You know we've heard it from. The likes of Barry and the likes of uh, mm. and you know, what was your experience of it like? Yeah, I tell you, well, in um, 90, I suppose the last World Cup I played, because I haven't played in the World Cup since I came back playing, but 94 was probably the last, well, the only World Cup I played in, and then I, I, I before I'd stopped playing. And that was, yeah, it was, that the, the, even at that age, like, I was a kid then, and the, the, the standard of it, it was just... I suppose we didn't realise at all in this island how, other than having big tournaments, like we did have the Dublin Open, we had tournaments in Bangor where you get a lot of continental players coming over. But the standard yeah. of the World Cup was just, I mean, you know, you're watching 12-year-olds losing a game and breaking down crying, like, you know what I mean? And, and, oh, oh, and that was you. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was crying when I had to play a twelve year old. That's what I was <laughs> but the, the the standard was off the charts, and you know you go into a venue like a World Cup and you see thirty odd tables set up with sponsorship hanging off every one of them and TV crews milling around. And as I said, this was ninety four. You know when we were a kid, and and, and that was a, such a huge jump up in level from what we were even playing at then. Yeah. And um, yeah, as you say, the North South thing. We were still we we're playing each other's tournaments even back then, you know, and um, and and practically traveling as you know. Of course, we'd hang out together when we'd meet at a World Cup, for example. And other than that, we're constantly driving up and down. Bangor was a big one, um, and a Dublin Open. And I used to remember then the early nineties. Martin Taylor, he used to run the kind of the the association in the South, and. You get a lot of um, he he for some reason, no matter how we done it, he got all the foreign lads, the top lads, come over and play from Wales, Eric Nazali and Carl Young, all the top players at the time. 
they'd come over in their dozens for some reason for this one tournament, the Dublin Open. Now yeah. it was a ranking event and all that. It was a Grand Prix and all that. So I carried the points, I suppose. And then there was one in Bangor, maybe um, <clears throat> on the Wednesday or the Tuesday following the Saturday. So it was designed to sort of keep the lads held here for those few days and they'd get value out of their trip, you know. At a time yeah. in the early 90s when, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't any, I wouldn't mean a cheap and easy thing to be jumping on flights all over the place, you know. Nah. And, uh, I guess it wouldn't have been easy trying and them days. I know ninety four wouldn't wouldn't have been like the the most peaceful times in Ireland. So they yeah. always to go go to Dublin, then cross the yeah. border and see army checkpoints. And they must yeah. be thinking, what well, this is like another like a proper war zone, you know? So yeah, yeah. They, they keep coming back. It's it's a credit to the sport. As, yeah. as if you if you want to call it a sport, it's a beauty. The characters, you know, the characters, the characters like your, your and the people, and yeah, people it's, over, it's, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And and Martin Taylor had a good had a great role in that. I remember how he got them over. As I said, I don't know. You'd, you'd go to the Dublin Open, and we'd be playing our own little, you know, our own local events. You might say, um, and we'd have good turnouts. You know, you'd have twenty, thirty players maybe, but you go to the Dublin Open and you out in our town, a massive gym hall, and Martin have all the equipment there to be sponsored from Waddington's, and you go, oh, this is you know, this is on our doorstep here. This is brilliant, and you know, Austrians yeah. going by, the oh, the Belgians are over there, there's French lads over there, and you're going, what? Oh, as I said, we were younger playing the game then, and it was all such a thrill. You know what I mean? Had a yeah. would have been. And uh, yeah, but the, the, uh, like I said, the, the lads then, Simon Stewart, Barry, uh, Kenny, all the lads were around then. A lot of other fellas I haven't seen since, but like they 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 were they were the mainstay even then, coming down in, in their droves and, and support the tournaments, you know, and vice versa. I suppose as as them boys haven't changed much since the last you you've seen them then. <laughs> no, no, it's still pretty much pretty much. <laughs> Wider oh, and Shane <laughs> Barry still uh, Barry, Barry looks younger than when he used to play it Barry back then. That's, that's, right. that's what I was going to say. He probably is stuff. younger. Okay. Um, one thing I forgot to do at the start uh, section of beers. So obviously we'll have a beer or a wine. But so beers. Zwei, drei, vier, lift your sign and drink your beer. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. Well, you know what I mean. I thought I'd, I'd try and li- lift you guys out of your kind of cultural gutter that you're in with all these beers each week. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, quite uh, sophisticated. To be fair, about Mark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Soho, just just across the road here. You know what I mean? Right. It's just <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so. I'm just finishing off uh, uh, an e- uh, a supermarket brand Eagle Hawk. Uh, let me see. Was it just as 2019 Sauvignon Cabernet? Not bad. Lovely. It's yeah, it's all right. Supermarket quality. And then um, I'll only have a bit of time then. I'll dig into this little, nice little Pinot Noir um, um, from Bonfield. And um, you can see it there. I know it's it's from 2018, but I know Martin Oak will know that already. He's, he's you know, he's, he's, a, he's a man <laughs> who knows these things. Yeah, he's, he's a, a connoisseur, yes. Well, I've, had it, I've heard it said about you. It was spelled differently. Spelled differently. <laughs> I've, gone, uh, I've gone quite low rent. Just, the, uh, just for the, the Dublin aesthetic. I've gone old school stout. Oh yeah, extra, extra stout. Uh, you, I can't Red see you now. You're 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 gone again to me. I can only see. You. Uh, what have you got? got the same one. Yeah, you can only see the you can only see the boss, can you? I got, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Getting, Lawrence, I knew you were. Play a moth. Oh, nice I one. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, the Morphys. Get, get a cork, a cork beer. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> That's a drink of there, Mark. If I drink a stout, it's definitely always a Murphy's I go for, more than the Guinness. Oh, yeah, there definitely. There you go, there you go. Definitely. And that's coming from a Dublin man. That, yeah, I know, right? I know. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge stout drinker now, but a, a friend of mine is, and if we go out, you know, we end up getting the same thing and oh, going out. Do you remember those days? And uh, <laughs> we, nah. <laughs> nah. Playing some video tournaments and all? Yeah, do you remember those days? <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, that lead me on to the next question um <clears throat> obviously before all this sort of happened you were the the current ulster champion um and then we we changed the name of it and we made it the the championship <coughs> we brought in the, the dublin leg which we also obviously had a fantastic day i think that was maybe been the last competition we ever we all ever played together oh, yeah, um, yeah. It yeah. Is, back, it in, back in march wasn't it the start of march i think so um, that's right yeah. uh, can, you, can you see 
Yeah. If you do go back to where it was and when, like, when do you think it could go back? They were traveling about playing competitions again. Yeah, I mean, isn't that the question? I suppose for everyone, everyone involved who loves organizing and playing is the very question on their lips, all right. But I can, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think it will change. I think the cohort of players like that again are a loyal group of players, you know, in terms of. It, it, they 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 belong in that community. They're not gonna they're not gonna you know they're not gonna just go somewhere else. I suppose what I'm saying. They'll be there. You know what I mean. And and it's yeah, especially around the UK and Ireland is a strong cohort of players. You know, and um, they they'll be there for the next tournament when uh, when we can do it. I mean, I I suppose long term you're thinking when can we do it? But uh, the best thing, let's be honest about it. For you either wait for a vaccine or you say to yourself. You know, we had to get tournaments going with a limited number of players in an environment where we wear masks and stuff. And that, that's probably, the, yeah. I think, the realistic uh, uh, comeback of the game. You know what I mean? Capped yeah. tournaments in uh, decent venues and people wearing masks and stuff. I, I can see that being it. And probably when the cases get to, a, well, I say manageable, no one knows what the golden number is. But, you know, yeah. uh, when you get down to a level of um, a baseline level, I suppose, of cases, because it's either that or, 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 or close up the shop till a vaccine comes along, I think, you know. So I, yeah. I think there'll be enough players anxious to get back playing at some point, you know, un, until that whenever day happens, you know. So I think that's the realistic next stage, I think, for the, for the game, you know, to come back. Yeah, I think, when, I think when we do come back together, we'll, we'll get one big tournament. We'll not, we'll not, you know, the Irish Championship, I think we had a near agreed day. Call it, call it what it was. Sure. Or champ again, Mark, do you know what I mean? But sure. rather than dragging that if we say whenever we did open up you'd be dragging halfway on this season but if we start with just one big yeah. Irish tournament the all Ireland you know if we just yeah. get the big all Ireland back yeah. get yeah. it on a weekend and get you know get the whole fold back in exactly I think that's a good idea and also it'll you know having a tournament would nearly be the first step and I think you know going well people would feel confident then even those who may not be confident to play in it maybe the first time around let's say you know I think once right. once once it's seen it'll you know it'll 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 take on its own life then you know yes yeah and uh, have so. you been have you still been playing at home on your own have you been flicking have you been doing anything no no no, well, well, actually, when you when you told me to come on the show, and after I, I'm, I'm in me, uh, I'm in me, well, relative tranquility here of the of the uh, the the box room in the house here. Uh, <laughs> the wife and kid are downstairs, I think. I don't I don't check on them, yeah. so I don't know where they are. But uh, <laughs> they're uh, I got me, yeah. um, I'm, I have my laptop on the board here as I'm as I'm talking to you. I got it back out today and just set it back up on the trestles and that. And um, you know, the intention of having an old uh, flick around again just to get the get the feeling back because I haven't really no, I haven't been playing. Um, I've been talking to a couple of lads like that I mentioned earlier, lad Ken. He, you know, he's re- um, close enough, but trying to get him up to the house. Of course, we're on these the next lockdowns now. You can't go any anywhere five km. So we we're we're all set to have an old uh, night. Just uh, you know, uh, maybe the, the, a few games between the two of us there. He's he's ordered a load of equipment. He's kind of getting back into it a bit more. And um, yeah, that went down there a couple of weeks ago, and they put the, the another kind of um, restrictions uh, around Dublin. So. Uh, the five K rule is doing us for the moment, but he'll be probably the he'll be the first guy I have a game against, I guess, when when we can uh, bring him around the house, you know. I suppose I'll have to go around go around and beat Bradley when we get the, our restrictions lifted. You yeah, know? Okay. Yeah. As, as you okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I can't see him now either, Lawrence. He's gone again. He's just a circle. I mean, I know that no, you know. He, I know you're. I know you're cutting them out of your life anyway, in general, these days, when it comes yeah. to, you know, your uh, fame and stuff, you know. And I understand you, that. You, I, I mean, I totally get it. Pete Best, you know what I mean? That's, he's the fifth Beatle. Oh, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? So, I, I you know, wish. I wish it was Pete Best. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's a bad analogy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad separating. Like, it's like separating that. does it? <laughs> and in the, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so, Mark, I would, I would definitely consider you as the best player in Ireland. Bradley might not consider you the best player in Ireland, um, but obviously you've done, a lot of, you've done a lot of traveling. Um, who would you consider to be the best player you've you've either ever played or you've ever seen playing at a competition? You know, obviously there's. Everybody has the same guy in mind, but mm. how you play them and what's it? What's your experience of playing them? 
Yeah, no, I, I, um, I see. I've seen the likes of the probably the, the the big players in the game like Flores and and fellas like that, and I never played him. Um, oh, uh, not, not Flores, but Vasco Guimaraes was. A, 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 I think he's kind of retired now, but a Portuguese lad, and he, you know, he was he's he's won tournaments for nearly thirty years, and he he was an amazing player. Um, he he, I played him a couple of times in the UK, and he yeah, you know, beat me at beat me in first gear sort of thing, and um, then. Players, I like what I do like. I have to say, is the players who can play fast as well. Like they may not be the best in the world, but they, I, I love watching that as a as a curiosity. The players who can play really fast and control the ball. Um, Alex Haas from Austria is one of them. Um, just that, just that, that that level of you know four flicks and and he's got a shot on, and you're going, oh, how did that happen? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's great. He, he, skill, he you know? bit me like, in Glasgow. He he bit me five 0 in Glasgow, and he wasn't even. He was being so subtle when he was doing it, but like you says, yeah. he would just he would just start a one end of the pitch, and the next thing he scored a goal. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's the next level up, those lads, you know, and it's it's brilliant to watch. Not great on the receiving end of it, and you're trying to compete <laughs> with them, but you know you have to admire it. Like the 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 control, that speed, I think, is a great element of the game uh, for for those players who who can do that, you know, and they can't. A lot of some of the some of the lads, is, you know, they're, they're more tactical, and of course, and you know, they they, they kind of they, they wait for you to make a mistake, you know, and um, but to see the lads who just raw speed, they just go at you. I always I always find that uh, uh, nice to watch, I suppose, unless it's me playing them. <laughs> we like the we like the good battles between you and Kenny over here. It yeah. always seems to be if there's a big competition, final two. Even we had the Derry Open, we had Wales and Scotland and England over. Ended up, Mark and Kenny used to. No, yeah, that, that, that battle, you know, the whole way going through. Yeah, but it's, never, it's, it's it's never a big convince. It's never, never like a two 0 It's always a one 0 shots, isn't it? It never it is. shows you hard. No, oh, we're even the epic. We're yeah, evenly matched to that sense. And yeah, Kenny is a fantastic player. And, and you know what? Yeah, like that's what I'd say to people starting out. You know, if you wanted to get good at the game, you you play Kenny as often as you could. You know, because he's tactically really good. And he just, what you know, like that. And I'm always aware when you're playing him, he's way, it, it's part of his game is also exploiting your mistakes, you know, a bad flick. And and he'll he'll, he'll see the angle already. The minute you've made the bad flick against him, you'll know, oh, oh no, you know, a bad block or something like that. You know, I know he's going to go through that little gap I've left. And sure enough, he'll pinpoint, be able to go through it. So like, yeah, I do yeah. enjoy those battles against Kenny. He's, he's um, to really, it's, it's you'd be just, you'd be, wrecked playing them you know what i mean it's mentally yeah. very fiery you know <laughs> you do you have to be at the top of your game oh, you absolutely them, don't you? Uh, and, and that's but that's part of the isn't that that's why I, that's why i love playing it because you know it's that competition you know it's the, the competitiveness and, and and the different styles and kenny's is a great style to come up against and as i said reg anybody who said you know uh, uh, how they who will i see uh who will i learn a lot from i'd say play likes of kenny if you can you know because uh he's, he's a guy who will uh You'll see what he's trying to do almost. You know, once you start catching up with him, you'll see what he's trying yes. to do, and you see, and you, and not that you see what he sees, the but the angles he makes for himself are brilliant, and and it's right. almost like a chess game, you know. He got. Mm. I mean, I I've played him, um, and you, you sort of when you play him, and then you go and play somebody after playing Kenny. You try things that you've seen Kenny. Yeah. Try. <laughs> obviously, uh. obviously, they don't work, but I mean, he does. Like you pick so much up from them, like, yeah. One thing, well, that's it. One thing I, I would say, Martin probably doesn't get the same treatment that I do when I play you. Is you probably play him with one hand, hey, in your back in first gear, and you're still whopping me all around the park, you know. Whereas you're probably Bradley give you a better a better game than I would, but I think just playing the likes of you and Kenny is nice, I phenomenal. Like, only, I think I've only given you one good game. I think I was in Dublin. You still bit me, but I think you that's- bit me one now. That's right, yeah, yeah. Well, well, look at that's that's what I mean. You know, you, you're you're a couple of years in now, and you're 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 making that that I won't say. You know, you you kind of within the six months, you're 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 at ninety percent of where your game's going to be. You can really only improve another ten percent over the, the next however long that is. I think you know, yeah. And, and you just need to find that extra few percent because you know it's like a knack. You pick it up quickly, but then you improve on it. I think slowly, you know, and. Um, you find your level, I suppose, early, but you're making that step up now. You can see you're not playing as fast or as maybe as 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 reckless as you are when we first, you know, played maybe a couple of years ago. And that's that's what you learn, though. You know, you you, you see that from other players. You 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 see it by getting punished for your mistakes. You know, and you go, I won't try that. Yeah. I'll try the, I'll try the safe option instead. Or you know, you just you, you you balance it a bit more. And it's a, it's a, as I say, I like that competitive uh, sort of. 
the learning you do on the job, I suppose, playing players like Kenny and that, you know. That's the better, yeah, the like, better you play, the better you get. Absolutely. Like, the better you, the person that you're playing. Do you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and, I'm, almost, I, I'm almost happy if I can get the half time against you, Mark. And no, no. <laughs> well, well, that's probably. Well, well, I, I, enjoy, I, I enjoy the gentleman with Farrell 4. We've kind of. Farrell you always, <laughs> always beat. You just. Whenever we start a play, we, you just bet everybody 4 0. No matter, <laughs> this was Kenny or somebody, no matter who you're playing, you, you 4 0. It's like you would get the 3 0 and you'd start. Back in a wee mistake and saying, oh, oh, I touched that player, go you, you know. And I was where, really, really Where's Kenny? Kenny just beats you. Kenny just, just fucking whops you. <laughs> Kenny just fucking That's <laughs> big. You go the tiger. The, the Kenny, the Kenny kicking, just fucking <laughs> on the mail. Fuck you. But you know, you're always... You're always aware of it too, like, and I think you do have that spirit of the game around here, and and and, and uh, you know England and Scotland and stuff. I, I do think that you know the the the, the group of players is, is kind of small, but we do have a different attitude to the game, I suppose. There will be nobody getting beaten fifteen nil in our games, like you might see. You might see <coughs> further field in festive events if, 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 as well. I mean. In fairness, sometimes you have to go for the goals. If some other guy's hammered you, you have to try and hammer another guy. You know what I mean? And there's all that tit for tat in the groups. But I think we're much more. Um, I think we're we're much. I won't say inclusive is the word, but like when you see new players coming along, you're you're aware that they're they're back in. You're not going to go out to destroy them that they never come back and play again. You know. And I think there's that. Um, there is that element. I think with any players around these islands, anyway, when they come out, you know what I mean. We're, we're grateful to have the numbers, <laughs> as it were, and we don't want to kind of do anything to damage That's that, it. you know, by putting players off early doors, you know. Kenny just has that um, tough love attitude, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't give you no advice. You, he's a lover. <laughs> he's a lover, not a fighter. Well, Mark, um, we're at, that's our interview all wrapped up. So what basically we have to do now is see what's in your box. So. What's in your box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? So, what's in my box? Well, I have a box here I got from Astro Base about 10 years ago. And a few stickers I have on the front. Uh, like most of the beautiful players, and we put stickers on the front of our boxes. I don't know why that is, but uh, I'm as bad now myself. Um, an old one here from about 1990. I think that was the Irish, original Irish Beauty Association one. And um, a few others there. Club I used to play for Yorkshire Phoenix, the UK and Ireland team championship. That was a good event that ran for maybe three years. Uh, a shame it ended. I'd love to see the return of those team events. There were great weekends. And then a few from around the UK and that. Or this one I got from Benji Batten, a lad you had on recently, a lovely fella. And of course, had to put front and center a Derry City one just to show me support, you know. and. Well, until at least the better sticker shows uh, shows up, then I'll just cover it over and forget I ever had it. And then inside, I don't really travel with too much equipment. I just kind of have a main team and a change strip. Uh, I've tried most bases over the years, like most players, you know, Profi Base and Astro Base, and I have a few other teams somewhere, but I always settle back with these. It's just the Extreme Works Universal Base. The difference is I take the weights out of them. So I find that to be a kind of... Uh, happy medium, I suppose. The, the flicks and the the, uh, the long shots and the touch ups are better. Uh, the, sh uh, um, the the shots on goal can be a bit erratic, but like I said, it's about finding a combination that you can live with. So, extreme works universal there for me. And a couple of spare goalkeepers, I think I have. Yeah, the iconic kind of West Germany nineteen ninety kit there. That's 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 the old old Earth, the beauty of equipment there, Hasbro or Waddingtons. And then a team I got done up there, Statis at Moise Beautio, done up these decals. And John Halpin from the Glasgow Club painted them up for me. Um, they're a lovely team, actually. Uh, the St. Patrick's Athletic, the team I follow down here in the waist strip. And the detail is amazing on them. Uh, you probably can't see it well there, but there's even the tattoos on the players' arms. And I mean, it's it's amazing. Anyone that has the eye for that stuff, I always kind of I find mind blowing. I mean, the patience it takes to apply all that stuff. And I know yourselves are good at are good at that end of it too. But as I said it's a it's a skill and a patience I don't have. And a few balls then I have in here. I suppose for tournaments. Um, I'd use the top spin, a more modern ball. They're very kind of always consistent, always run through. I've never seen them broken or, or, or anything like that. And the kind of the older ones, just uh, for the for the kind of collectors, are more like the Adidas, the Orange Tango, and the Mitre Delta. 
I don't have a, actually uh, any proper miter doubt that they're cracked. So this one was recreated by Statis at Maestro Beauty again. And you applied the decals on it, so I really love the look of that from from the from the old days. And last thing I have then is just a oh yeah, this is from nineteen ninety four. So I went to the World Cup in ninety four um, as a Republic of Ireland U champion, and that was just a measuring tool from from that uh, event, a great event. And it's the only bit of memorabilia I have still surviving to this day. So I keep that in there for the sake of it. And that's about the size of what I have in my box. So, thanks. So, that's, we'll just cut away that. If you send me a wee video of your, your box, landscape, what you're, what's in it and whatever else in it, we'll sure. cut that in and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll say our thanks and all that. Um, yeah. Match highlights is going to be you against me and against Kenny. So, Bradley's going to mix that all up. Very good. Make something, make something spectacular. It looks like I beat you. <laughs> as much as I can. <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you, Martin. You've been you've been frozen the whole time here. I'm sorry, I haven't wait, seen. Uh, you. I, I can see me. I can see all of these. Uh, I can see us all. No, I cannot see as your as your uh, header. Hopefully, hopefully it records. And I'm not sure if he's not on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, was. What yeah. was? Van, uh, <laughs> right. really glad to see you, Mark. <laughs> so we'll, we'll come back as if we'll just watch your your box um obviously we'll not talk about it because you've you've talked about it and we don't know what you've showed it so <laughs> so three two one and there you go that's that's mark farrell's famous box it's probably traveled famous halfway box. around the globe so that box was actually um, there was actually a, an apb missing amber alert for that box was there not a year or two ago mark yeah, that's right <laughs> That's I, I was it was accidentally <laughs> put in the back of a car and stuck in uh, sent to Wales and uh, yeah John Lauder fair play they they tracked it down and John Lauder got it back to me in the post safe safe and sound thankfully I used to I used to carry all my teams in it ever since then I don't I'm a bit gun shy now because I, <laughs> I, I used to have me four teams in it and that was all like they were the only teams I liked you know so now I just bring one and a, and a change as it were and I leave the others at home in case the worst <laughs> ever happens <laughs> again yes, I know. Jesus. Um, Mark we are going to show your match highlights with match highlights for uh, you're playing me I think I beat you one now um Martin's going to do some, some, some digital fixing there to make it look like I beat you. And yes, against superimposed well. hands head and yours, Mark. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to show your match highlights, and basically we'd just like to thank you for coming. It's been fantastic, a great, a great interview as always. One I've been looking forward to. I don't think we'll get you so soon. No, 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 no pleasure. Uh, uh, listen, fair play with the show, lads. Keep it going. You know, it's great, especially in these times, you know, to keep the game, keep the flame going. Yeah, well, we've, we've, committed to, we've committed to it now because it's a fantasy football show. We've yeah. The season's over. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, of course. The fantasy element, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, well, that, no. Fan, that, fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> well, it's good. You've had, a, you've had a virtual visit to the shed anyway, Mark. Looks well. Looks well. Need it. Once these restrictions left, we need to get you up and do something in the shed at least. Right. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, yeah. I'd say like, I mean, the whatever, whatever you had before, people's appetite about maybe not playing in a tournament, maybe all this. I say the first tournaments that are, are the first chances to play, everyone would be out. You know, it'd be like when the pubs reopen, <laughs> everyone would just be out. You know, the built boys' wrist business and everything. Mm-hmm. We'll have, to, we'll, have to, we'll have to cap our, our first wasp with her when we get going again. You know, oh, we have to keep the 50 lads. That's enough, you know. <laughs> we have a new well, guy Mark, on the scene as well. Oh, Good. Go yeah, yeah, he contacted me as well, Mark. Or Mark Nog. That's about right, getting some right. teams fixed up for his team. He's got bases and stuff. So. Yeah, I'll I'll touch us, Mark. He used to, D, D Jenkins. He used to run a league in Strathfoyle. Just outside Derry in the late seventies, early eighties. Okay. It was a big thing going on. That's just great. I mean, just that you tell you, there, there is the, there is the place to be here. You know, it's uh, there are all these players are all center. these players going back. Not in right. soccer, anyway. <laughs> right. No, that's true. Right. Right. Two Get teams in Derry. Get in the bin. Sorry. Right, Mark, we'll let you go and get your get yourself home or whatever you have to do the night. Friday night, obviously, you want to drink that bottle of wine. So Definitely. thank you 
thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. You've been amazing. I'm sure Martin pleasure, will agree. No See you soon, lads. Yeah. Right. Take care. Gent- Thanks, Gent- Martin, Gent- as always. Well. Well. See you soon. Bye, bye, bye. bye. bye, bye, bye. All right, bye. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, there it is. We're mobile for the big one. Oh, okay, boys. He's going to thumbs up. Three, two, one. Now I've got a cousin called Kevin. Last time. I'll put the uh, I'll put fire mm-hmm. under pressure. Five minutes. Five minutes. Two. One. Good throw.
Rock. Can I ask twice, Nari? Have we been waiting on you? Okay. No flex. No flex, no distance. Oh, congratulations, Mark. Congratulations, Kenny. Very good. Played well. Panthers corner. Panthers yes. corner. Um, last week, we had competition no well, I'm not even going to go to the competition uh, this week Colerfield has done a beautiful Honduras team um, 1982 Honduras on heavyweights tasty tasty beautiful. team beautiful um, and obviously last week's challenge was West Brom which you didn't compete in you've started it but never never finished um, and the winner of this started week's it, but never finished uh, see, you should have finished that. So this week it was the four of us: um, Subido Legends, Colerfield, Kitzer Flix, and me. And it was a dead heat. Put it on Twitter the other day, and everybody got the same amount of votes. So, uh, well, goalkeeper not everybody. No, no, that's this week's. So, all right. This week okay. we have the goalkeeper, Japan, nineteen ninety-eight goalkeeper kit, as you can see there. Uh, and we only got Too three hard. nominations. He got three nominations. So this is Subidio Legends. It's a standard, standard goalkeeper. No jumping or diving or kicking or anything. So he may lose point. points for that. Um, we have the guy who nominated it, which was Colerfield, who done Honduras. So that's his effort. Very nice. Very nice. nice. And then obviously mine. Mine's a, I mine's the best. <laughs> All right, and, and up until now, there's only three, and I'll leave a blank space here for anybody that. Well, there's a good one, one in. again. There seems to be a good one, one every week. Uh, there is well, there's a good one every week and a bad one. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. And then Hell Coil, one two three, Subutio has done. Stephen H throughout the years, and that's his photo there of Stephen H throughout the years. He's done a couple of different kits, and they're very nice. Lovely. And Lovely. give him a wee check out on Twitter, and give him a follow, and give him a like, and give him a share, and whatever else you have to do. So I wonder is that his local team? Stephen H. I like that. Yeah, I'd like that if that was his local team, and he. he or maybe he's a, it. maybe he's just made a a, a job request work. For Stephen H. I'd say Stephen H is somewhere below London. Below nah. London? Yeah, my way. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, you could be no. right. No. Well, that would be that would be above London. Below London? No, I'm below thinking London. of Dagenham. Dagenham and Redbridge is below London, so Stephen H might be Stephen H might be up north beside Newcastle. Shit, I don't know. Answers on a postcard. What's he'll sort oh, out a prize for the winner? First out of the hat, <laughs> the pinpoints where Stephen is. One's a, one's Apolo- a TV. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to everybody in Stephen <laughs> who watches the show. Um, 
So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut away from Painter's Corner. That's Painter's Corner, Dom. Um, I'm gonna I want to cover something I mentioned to you last week, and I never covered them, and I apologize. But um, there is a wee Subudio channel on YouTube called Subudio Game of the Day. Remember, I sent you the link. Oh yes. It's a, it's a father and son. So <coughs> they play Subudio. Uh, obviously, they're playing in their, each other's houses or whatever. They're in a bubble if they're still playing at the minute. But because they, they record them, they can't send them to each other because the videos are too big. So they post it on YouTube. So they have like, plenty of odd subscribers. Um, and people do watch it now. It's a brilliant video. It's nice. It's good. It's nice. <laughs> nice, nice. So we're doing the match of the day, say, and I think it might be the father that does the commentary. So I'm going to show you a quick video that I caught up. Not Martin, because Martin's too much in his hands. So I cut this up off YouTube, and here it is. Just have a week to watch this. Oh, the Siemens deflected it. Whether it was his ball or not to deflect, I don't know. But Chelsea now, line up a shot. Oh, Dennis Wise has just nipped that past the post. I mean, Siemens looked like he nearly got a yellow card. And uh, Arsenal now in a really dangerous position. Should he? Is he going to shoot? No. He's passing the China little routine. Oh, and it's deflected tamely off the wall. Oh, you'd expect better there, but they've got the ball now. They've recovered it on the left wing of Arsenal. Moving the cross. Shoot! Jomberg! He's done it again! Goodness me, that's a fantastic goal! Oh, I think that's stuck to the key routine. He's got it. You Point cannot... from this game. Norwich going for... Oh, that's a good shot. That's a good attempt by Ricky Lambert there. Starting as they mean to go on. Oh, he's hit the bar. Goodness me, it took a slow motion replay to see that one. A ball played forward from Sheffield now. Not wasting any time getting forward. Oh, that's lovely play, very intricate. Shoot, oh! I think that one took John Ruddy off guard there. Goodness me, that was a good attempt. Norwich though now on their way forward. Moves ball, Grand Hall shoots, oh! I mean, if they can just get that one goal to put them in front, then uh, it, it relieves a lot of pressure on them. Norwich now with the ball. Oh, but it's a miss, a chance, a chance, a chance, a chance, trying to pass it back. And Billy Sharp's through, and it's a goal! Goodness me, a wasted back pass. So there you go. Um, brilliant. I think, I, think, I think it's brilliant. And brilliant. They, should, correct, they, so they, deserve, they deserve more subscribers. They've only like 20-odd subscribers. Get, get like and get following them. Um, obviously, maybe, maybe they're maybe they're not. Uh, they're not into the subscribers. You know what I mean? Maybe they're not subscriber people. People, whores. That's what they would, they would call them in the in the social media age. Well, like me, I, I wouldn't be. Like I like that. Them. I'd be quite happy with whatever subscribers organically come to me. You know, to a channel that I'm involved in. Yeah, I wouldn't go running around. Pouring yourself out. God, God, God knows who they are, just to get a few extra likes. You know, I wouldn't be like well, that. Be like game boys that produce same match of the day videos. So I, 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 applaud, I, I applaud them yet again. I um, I done a thing last night. I done a podcast last night. Last an interview. Here we fucking, here we fucking go. Here we fucking go. <laughs> what, podcast interview with who? Podcast Finger. interview with who? About finger what? flick, finger flicking goods, finger, finger flicking goods. goods. Right, what was it? What was the podcast about? It's just a subvideo chat, an interview about oh, subvideo. Just a subvideo chat, all right. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's a subvideo podcast. A subvideo podcast, eh? Okay. I don't know. I must be a big draw. I don't know why they don't ask you. I did flaunt your name and see if he. Me. I did flaunt your name to see if he wanted anybody else. So maybe he give you a ring. No, do you know what he can do if he rings me? He can stick his phone yeah, and it's a video your podcast. Hey, your jumper. On your jumper. Up his arse. Up his arse. Ah. He can stick it. <laughs> anyway, I, su I support you. I, you your, know there's children. Ruby your watches this. Uh, I support you expanding your horizons. Ruby watches this. Just remember. Ruby knows me so, well enough. Well, you can't be saying stuff like that. So. They uh, take my side. Without further ado, would you like to introduce Ruby? The one, the only, the world number one and only. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Martin. 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 Hi
next year I thought I thought I'd tell you about my last game with my dad. So I lost two nil, uh, and at the first half it was nil nil, and I was saving the goals. But then the second half he put scored two goals, so the game ended two nil. Hi Lance, today I thought I'd show you my London Road tops. This is the original first London Road top. Then this is our second London Road top with the Dragon logo. Then our third one is black. Our fourth one was sponsored by My Sabutio Table Soccer Pro. And our latest season is sponsored by BCCM. These are all our tops. Bye. Slow clap. Slow clap. Dirty, dirty Kane Matthews. Dirty, dirty Kane Matthews. Bad. Bad Santa. Up. That went bad Santa. And did you see that? Uh, I'll put him the bad. Uh, the bad list for Santa. Lax, because of the lax COVID restrictions in Wales, and they've been able to play a few matches, Kane has eventually managed to creep above me. In the Wasp of Church. But you're there on a fire brick now. I know you, but not before. Oh, so he's above you no. in the church. Do you want to talk about the he's church? Above me in the church. Don't talk about the church now. But I can just Somebody see else. him. I can, I can just see in my head that if they've had him running around the table, his big lanky arms, pushing Ruby's head out of the road and all, <laughs> charging on up a pitch. His, 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 big, his big fingers. Look, his big fingers the size of Ruby's leg, for God's sake. But they're Give it. So beating her well. The only way he's he's gonna get us come up and sometime. Don't worry about it. Probably wait. Somebody bigger comes, than him. Probably waits until she's just on the door from school, tired and hungry, <laughs> ham lying in his arse all day, eating bones. But on the pitch, on the pitch, two 0 Two 0 Two 0 Shotgun, shotgun, Can't believe, can't believe he done that. The poor child. He's done worse but, than other people. He's done worse than big grown men. There you uh, go. It's like we say, it's it's a canny, it's a canny treatment, doesn't it? It's a bit of a canny treatment. It's That's it's it. hard, tough love, tough love. It's the only way you learn. Give him a, I, just give him a kick him. Give him a kick him. Do you think when I was when I was ten, my dad used to take me out the bike, and I used to go right there where we're going. They go see that big massive hill. We're going up that. Stay long, and they just rode away and left me. And I got that top, and I was like, you look me all over. They're like, it's the only way you learn, son. And he was right. Well, he was right, so it does work. Still can't get up hills. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bradley. I think I think that's that's a wrap this week. Okay, okay. Um, next week, next next Tuesday night, I'll be doing the <laughs> the Netflix show. <laughs> I can't believe you're even trying to pump that shit out in this on this channel. You know, I'm not. I'm on, not. On a press, you know, I'll press cut this on a prestige <laughs> video channel. You'll know I'll cut, cut that out. Cutting it out. I have a copy of this recording. Remember? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it's been good cut, this week. I have, I have definitely enjoyed it. it. Definitely enjoyed it. So the Mark was brilliant. Mark was brilliant. Mark was well, brilliant. Mark brilliant. So. Mark is I mean? just an absolute Mark gentleman. Is, you could... Brilliant on the pitch and off the pitch. He's, he's, he has one of life's gentlemen. He really is. He's a model pro, wouldn't you say? I would, you know. He is, and he is, he is Ireland's pro. He really is. And he's, he's Fantastic. you know, the length and breadth of the UK and Europe, there's nothing but praise for Mark Farrell from everybody. And there's nothing. There's been nothing but praise for Fred as well last week. A lot of praise for Fred's Fred. Great fella. Fred great was fantastic, fella. wasn't interview. he? Mm. Really did, and we. I think we're setting the standards up here. Well, who's so who next comes? Week? Who you have next who week? comes on next week? I don't know. Anybody want to come on? Help us out. I think you're better than Mark Farrow, Fred, Simon Stewart, Barry Spence, I, Oshie I seen, Moore, I seen Moore, Kean Matthews, boy. Who else we had? Oh. Your mate. Bad boy boxes. 
He owes us. We, uh, he owes you, us. Did you forget we sexy Brian? <laughs> he owes us a show. He only done a wee interview. He owes us a show. We need to get Brian on this show. Brian Daly, part two. Bad boy boxes. Proudly sponsors. Yeah. What's in your box? What's in your box? <laughs> bad boys too. Get bad boy two on. <laughs> <laughs> right, you whore, you. Must let you go. Okay, dog. Been, it's been emotional. It's been real, man. I'll see you next week. Keep safe, stay strong. Week. Be good. Left the mule again. Mark Farrell, superstar. You've heard quite a lot of shit out of Watsy there about beating Mark Farrell one all mm-hmm. things. No chance. You also, you haven't heard no talk about this new channel. I think it's fallen on a already because it was quite dull and all the reports I'm getting are that very dull. We'd rather watch table football monthly. They're coming back now.